what is action for beginners and how to adjust the action on an acoustic guitar. This is a new version of an old video where I've done some updates and made some corrections. Action is the height of the strings above the frets and a lot of importance is given to action because of the effects it has on the playability of guitars. For example, if the action is very high, then the guitar can be practically unplayable. You can see on this illustration here, if the action is too high, then you'll find your fingers will touch the other strings. Whereas, if the action is lower, then you'll find there's more room between your fingers and the neighbouring strings. Apart from this, if your guitar's got a low action, you don't have to push your finger down so far before the string is fretted. And this can be very useful if you want to play really quickly. This being said, a very low action can cause buzz, and a slightly higher action can sound better. And some of the world's leading guitarists prefer a slightly higher action. Reasons for this include the fact that with a higher action, you're far less likely to get buzz especially if you hold the guitar correctly. And many jazz players really require perfectly clean notes and chords. Another thing that is said to be gained by higher action is a longer sustain. And that's because the gap between the frets and the string being larger allows the strings to vibrate more freely and therefore you get a slightly greater sustain. But to be completely honest, not many guitarists can hear these differences. So, don't get stressed out by anyone, as long as you're happy with the way that your guitar plays and it sounds okay, leave it well alone. Taking all of these factors into consideration then, there isn't an exact correct height for your guitar. Most makers do provide an optimal height for the actions for their guitars, however this also depends on the model of guitar and variations within that model of guitar. And even then, the heights that they suggest allow a really high tolerance. So, there isn't any correct height for the action. It depends on the guitarist and the guitar. Some of the things that will affect the best action for your guitar will be the gauge of the strings, that's the thickness of the strings, the radius of your fingerboard, that's how curved the top of your fingerboard is, the condition of your frets, and how worn they are and how old they are. The condition of your neck and how straight it is and how level it is. And just as important as all of these factors is your own personal taste. Do you prefer a slightly higher action or a slightly lower action? And these are just some of the factors that affect the action on your guitar. How to adjust the action on an acoustic guitar. The first thing we need to do to set the action on any guitar, electric or acoustic, is to check the condition of the neck. And the first thing we need to look for is something that is a serious problem, but can easily be overlooked, and that is a twist in the neck. And the reason I say it's a serious problem is because it's very difficult to fix. And if you take it to a luthier, it could cost you quite easily more than the guitar is worth. If your guitar's under guarantee and you do find a serious twist in the neck, I'd take it back as it's one of the things that the guarantee will cover. How to inspect the neck of your guitar. To inspect the neck of your guitar, you need to either look down or up it so that you've got a view right the way along the edge of all the frets. I find the easiest way to do this is to sit down and place the guitar between my legs and then look down from the headstock over the nut. So you can see the nut, the frets and the saddle all in one compressed view. Now, to find a twist, what you're looking for is anything that's not parallel. So you're looking at the nut and the frets and the saddle or bridge and checking they're as parallel as possible. The confirmation really is to look at the frets rather than anything else. So if you look at the frets and see they're not lining up, then you've possibly got a twisted neck. However, if they seem reasonably straight and parallel to one another, then you're okay. Unfortunately, recognizing problems with the neck is a learnt skill. 
time and time again I've had clients here where I've said look at that neck which is terribly bent and the client just couldn't see it. So sometimes it's not obvious you might have to return and look again and again and try different angles before you notice if it's right or if it's wrong. If you're not sure just leave the guitar alone. Though if you do have a twisted neck there's very little you can do about it. But the good news is you hardly ever see them. So it's highly unlikely you've got a twisted neck. However, it's important to check before we start adjusting the action. The next thing we need to check is what's called the neck relief. And this is basically how straight the neck is. And in a couple of extreme cases I've seen, sorting out the neck relief has actually sorted out the neck of the guitar and reduced the action. But even if this isn't the case with your guitar, we need to check the neck relief before we lower the action to make sure your guitar will still play correctly once you've adjusted it. And to inspect this, we're looking down the neck again, and we're looking at the edges of the frets this time. If the neck seems straight, that's brilliant. However, if you see it dipping away, this is called a bow, and we can correct this. Or if you see it humping upwards, this is called a hump, and we can also correct this. Without trying to overcomplicate things, the ideal neck needs to have a slight bow. And this is because of the way the strings vibrate. If the neck is truly completely flat or slightly humped, this will play against the vibrations and you'll end up with buzzing frets. So you just want the slightest bow in the neck and this is fine. So if you're looking down the neck and you're seeing a very slight bow, don't worry about it. But before we go any further or decide if we've got a bent neck, we have to do an accurate check and we do this with a ruler or a straight edge. As long as it'll sit between the strings and it's completely straight. So in this case, I'm placing the ruler between the middle two strings onto the frets. You want the ruler to sit on the first fret and the last fret. And straight away, if you find it can't do this because it seesaws between the last fret and the first fret, then you've got a hump in the neck. And this is a problem that needs to be sorted. Otherwise, if it is sitting on the first and the last fret, you need to check around the middle of the guitar to see if it's touching those frets. And if it isn't and there's a gap, then you've got a slight bow in the neck. If the bow is a millimetre or less, I wouldn't worry about it. This will play perfectly with the vibration of your strings and it will be fine. However, if the bow is really noticeable, say over a couple of millimetres, then you really need to bring it down slightly so it's not so pronounced. In both these cases, a hump or a bow, they can usually be sorted out quite easily in a very similar sort of way. If you haven't got a straight edge to check accurately for a bow or a hump, you can actually use your strings. And to do this, you can use a capo in the first fret and push down on all the strings just beyond the last fret or above the sound hole. Then you can look around the middle of the guitar to see how far away the strings are from the frets or whether the strings are pressing tight against the frets. If you haven't got a capo, you can just use your finger on the first fret as well as the last fret but it's quite difficult to hold the strings down and look at the guitar at the same time. Either way, the strings make a perfectly good straight edge. On this guitar, you can see it's got a very slight bow of less than a millimeter. And this is perfect really, and doesn't need to be adjusted. However, I will show you how it's adjusted anyway, in case you need to adjust your own. To adjust this guitar, I'll be using an Allen key and you actually get an Allen key with the guitar with this precise job in mind to adjust the truss rod. Adjusting the truss rod is surprisingly easy as long as you're careful. And the trick is to turn the truss rod tiny amounts, an eighth of a turn at the most, and then recheck the neck and then turn it tiny amount, recheck the neck. I have to give an important warning at this stage and that's don't force the truss rod. If it seizes up or goes completely tight, don't force it. If you damage the truss rod, you could easily write off the guitar. So never force the truss rod. 
On this guitar, the end of the truss rod being in the hull is probably one of the more convenient places for it to be. But it's still a bit of a pain because you have to work around the strings. And because I'm intending to replace the strings on this guitar, I'll just push them out of the way. Obviously, your truss rod can be adjusted in two directions. Anti-clockwise will remove a hump and clockwise will remove a bow. However, remember to adjust very small amounts and keep rechecking the neck. Otherwise, you'll go from having one problem to having the other. To explain this in very simple terms then, the truss rod is creating a pressure that is counter to your strings. So, when you tighten up your truss rod, which is turning it right, or clockwise, you'll be creating more pressure which will pull back on the neck and this will get rid of a bow or it'll make a hump worse. And the other way, when you turn the truss rod counterclockwise or left, you'll be loosening the truss rod and this will cause the um, strings to pull back and therefore the neck will either release from having a hump or you'll make a bow worse. In truth, it sounds more complicated than it is because as you adjust it, you'll see what the truss rod is doing and you'll be able to adjust accordingly. It's important to note at this stage that once you get reasonably close to the correct neck relief, you need to check it with the guitar strings in tune. This is because your neck is constantly fighting against the strings, so Having strings too tight or too loose affect the neck release. So when you do the final checks, make sure the guitar's in tune. Right, if you've checked your neck and it's got a very slight bow, don't bother adjusting it. If it's close to straight, don't bother adjusting it. You only really need to adjust it if you can see a serious issue. How to measure the guitar action height. Okay, once you're happy with the neck, the next thing we need to do is check the action at the 12th fret and we want to know how high the string is from the 12th fret. Before we do this, we want to make sure that the nut isn't having an effect on the action. And to do that, we want to put the capo back in the first fret or hold the strings down. Whilst the string's being held down in the first fret, we want to measure the distance between the 12th fret and the string. And to do this, we basically need anything that can measure a very small gap of under about five millimeters. Here we've got some things you can use, but basically you can use anything that will measure gaps of less than five millimeters okay. And we've got a couple of engineering rulers, which are ideal, uh, calipers, which are a bit more awkward, and a couple of devices that are specially designed for measuring uh, action heights. And the thing I'll be using, because it's easy, accurate, and it's very cheap for you to get hold of one, is this little card. And it's very easy to use. You just put it behind the strings and you're looking for the first block that is completely visible. And you don't want any extra space above the block. You want the one that's just visible and that's the height of your action. And you can see here on the bottom E string that the one that is just showing a complete block is the three millimeter one. The 275 is just below the string and the 325 is obscuring some of the block. And on the top E string, which I think is easier to measure because the th string is so much thinner, you can see the 275 seems to be the most accurate measurement there. This action's a little bit high, but not much. If you didn't want to adjust it, you wouldn't need to. The recommended on the bottom E string is somewhere around 2 to 2.5 millimeter, and on the top E string, it's somewhere between 1.75 and 2.25, and this is obviously for an acoustic guitar of this style. I think for my own tastes, I'm going to take a millimetre off all round. So that means the bottom E string will be two millimetre 
and the top E string will be 1.75. Now to lower the action what we have to do is remove the saddle and sand some off the bottom of it to reduce its height. Now this is interesting because the height we want to take off the saddle is twice what we want at the 12th fret. So for example in this case I want to take a millimetre off at the 12th fret so therefore I need to take two millimetres off at the saddle. And this is just because of physics or really more accurately trigonometry. If you look at your guitar and imagine your nut is a pivot point, by taking a millimetre off at the saddle we're only, it's only actually equating to a half at the 12th fret which is halfway down the length of your string. So to take a full millimetre off at the 12th fret we need to take two millimetres off at the uh, saddle. And this will obviously apply to whatever measurement you get at the 12th fret and what you want to take off. You need to double that at the uh, saddle to get the measurement you want. Right, let's take the saddle out so we can sand it down at the bottom. And the first thing we need to do to do this is remove the strings. So firstly, I'll remove the capo. Now I'll just detune and remove the strings. I've speeded this bit up to save the video being too long and boring. Hopefully I can remove these strings and then put them back on in order to test the guitar before I put new strings on, because I don't want to be taking new strings on and off. Here you can see I'm putting a bit of sellotape face upwards on the body of the guitar. I just find this easier to keep the pegs somewhere safe and also I can keep them in the right order as they sometimes vary in size so I find it far easier to put them back into the hole they came out of. To remove the pegs you just pull them straight out and you can get a special tool that quite often comes on the end of uh, string tighteners and things like this or you can just use pliers or if you grip very lightly you can use wire cutters like I'm doing here. It's quite common for them to stick tight and it's also quite common for them to break unfortunately but hopefully this won't happen today. If you do get a really tight one and you want to get it out without breaking it the best idea is to put your hand inside the guitar and tap it from the inside using something hardened metal like uh, the side of a pair of pliers or something like this. Here you can see I've loosened the peg from behind and then I'm going back round to the front of the guitar to finish pulling it out. Quite often the saddle will come out just between your fingertips but if it's stuck or tight, you might need to use a pair of pliers just to pull it out. And if you're nervous about sanding it down and you want to be sure, you can actually get a backup one really cheaply off the internet. I've seen them on eBay for about £2 or something like this. The problem is they tend to be in China and therefore you have to wait for a couple of weeks for them to arrive. So you want to get that new saddle before you start the job. They are pretty much a standard size, but you could measure it first to be sure. And what you're looking for is a saddle for an acoustic folk guitar. This saddle then is 72 millimeters, and that is a standard size for a folk guitar. Here you can see one of the spares or replacements off the internet, and it's an exact replica of the one I've taken out of the guitar. So you can see they are very much a standard size, and you wouldn't need to do anything to the new one to fit it back in. If you've got a classical guitar or a nylon strung one, almost certainly you'll have a different size saddle. But it's easy enough to measure and it's better if you do that before ordering a replacement. And for a couple of quid more you could upgrade to a bone saddle and this should improve the sound of your guitar. Before you start sanding it's important to mark up where you want to sand to. So you want to measure up to the 2mm in this case or a millimetre or whatever you want to sand to. 
If you're marking the bit you're sanding away, it doesn't matter if you use permanent ink, and if the marker goes over the line slightly, this doesn't matter either, because the edge you're sanding will be well below the level of the bridge, and so it won't be seen. I like to mark it off with tape, because I find that simpler, and I've always got tape lying around. You need to sand it down against something completely flat as well. A piece of wood would do, or even a desk or a piece of sheet of glass, just something flat. I'm using this aluminium block because I know it's completely flat and I've used this on multiple other occasions. To actually watch the nut being sanded down would be mind-bendingly boring, so I've speeded this bit up, but it's worth me pointing out, as you get closer to the required size, stop frequently and check so you don't sand too far and also you can make sure the bottom is completely flat. Music was a clip of I Love You by Sad Fantasy. Now I've got the saddle to the height I want it, I just need to remove the tape and clean it up. And what I'll do is, just uh, so you can see the difference, I'll show you alongside the uh, spare that I showed you earlier, and you can see the difference in size. This should be uh, an easy way for you to see how much I've taken off the bottom of it. Hopefully you can see the difference in height between the two saddles, even though I'm having difficulty keeping them in focus. And that should be about 2mm all the way around that's been taken off it. Here it is in a photograph so you can see it more clearly. The next thing we need to do is push the saddle back into place in the slot on the bridge and make sure it's facing the right way. Either remember which way it's facing when you take it out of the guitar or use one of the many references on the internet like this video when you put it back because it is a standard direction. I'm going to speed up the next section again because I'm just putting the strings back on. I don't like to put the old strings back on a guitar because there's always the chance they might break. However, in this particular instance I'm going to put them back on anyway because I've got a suspicion I might need to take them off again later. If you've never taken strings off a guitar or put them back on before, I'll put a link down below in the description that shows you in detail how to do it. I'm making this video on the basis that most people who want to adjust the action already know how to change the strings. Thank you. 
normally I just put the strings back on one by one but in this case I'm going to put these two on together because it's a real pain in the neck having to move the camera and the lights and the guitar back and forward between one end of the guitar and the other. And now, because I've got all the pegs back in their relevant holes, I've got rid of the tape so it doesn't stay on too long and potentially leave any marks on the guitar. Once you've got the strings on and you've got the guitar up to tune, you can then recheck the action. However, it's important that the guitar is back in tune because, as I mentioned earlier, the pressure of the strings pulling on the neck changes the action. So you always want to check the action when the guitar's in tune. Right, now the guitar's in tune, let's check the action. As we did earlier in this video, I'll put the capo in the first fret, so the height of the nut doesn't have any impact on the action at the 12th fret and then we'll recheck the action. You might remember that earlier in this video I said the target height was 1.75mm on the top E string and 2mm on the bottom E string. So let's see what we've achieved. And on the bottom E string we're bang on 2mm. That's really good. Uh, obviously I allow a little tolerance but this is, bit, this is bang on. So now we'll look at the top E string. And I'm really pleased to say that the top string is also bang on. This doesn't always happen, so I'm really pleased about that. Now, the last thing I want to do, especially on a particularly cheap guitar like this one, is to check all the frets and to check we're not getting any buzz. Because the problem with lowering the action is if you've got a cheaper guitar, it shows up any imperfections in the fret heights, and quite often you'll get buzz, so we'll just check that now. And there's only one way to really check this, and that's to play every single fret on the guitar. Don't hurry this process, because you need to have time to listen to each fret. And also, if you do get a buzz, double check it and triple check it because you don't want to blame the guitar for something that might be your fault. Now, what I've found by going through all the frets on this guitar is that it's got a buzz on the 12th fret. Now this means that the 13th fret is proud and I can demonstrate this using what's called a fret rocker. Now, if I place it on the 13th fret, straddling the 12th and the 14th fret, you can hear I can rock between the other two frets. And this demonstrates that the 13th fret is just a little too high, and this is why it's buzzing. You might have also noticed that I moved the fret rocker down the length of the fret from string to string. And doing this, I've established the fact that this fret is only high on the top three strings. On the bottom three strings, it's perfectly fine. If you're just learning the guitar, and you're playing mainly open chords and stuff, and even playing right up to the 10th or 11th fret, this wouldn't be a problem, so it wouldn't need to be fixed straight away. However, I'll show you how to fix any buzzing frets in the next video. kind of expecting and hoping to have this problem with the odd buzzing fret so I'm not too disappointed and that's why I put the old strings back on. This just gives me the chance to make a further video on how to fix buzzing frets. I feel I should also point out that this guitar now is so much better to play it's a really pleasant guitar to play whereas previously it was pretty horrid. As this is an updated version of an older video 
I've already made the video on how to repair fret buzz and you can find the link to that down below in the description. However, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And at my YouTube channel, you'll find lots more on guitars, guitar reviews, guitar repairs and modifications, as well as guitar lessons. If you want to see the guitar courses in order with the eBooks to view online, you can find those at www.ebooksforguitar.com and there's lots of completely free guitar courses that you can study online there. And finally, thank you very much for watching.